Welcome to Mac Helpers. In this video, we're going to continue on with numbers, and let's go ahead and open up this uh, sample test uh, video uh, spreadsheet we've been working on in the last few videos. But uh, so in this one, I'm going to show you how to add graphs and charts, and actually show you how to manipulate the data and really use it and make a really cool looking graph. So let's go ahead and just mess with uh, this table. Let's go ahead and just do a, a graph with gas. And so. What's cool is it gives you two different ways to do it, but in this one I'm going to show you the first way, and then you, so you just select that row and hit Create Chart. Then it allows you to pick between 2D, 3D, or Interactive. On this one, let's just go ahead and do 2D, and I'm going to show you how we can change it later. So this just gives you the different options. They've already got kind of got color choices for you from just different shades of blue, uh, blue, green, and gray. Uh, throw different colors in there, a little bit brighter colors, uh, gray, just gray and white and then let's so let's just go ahead and pick let's go with these guys right here that's I think that's pretty cool looking and so here we are and now the first thing we want to do is just kind of just figure out why they're look at all this extra space next to March uh, right after March there's just a ton of space so what you want to do is just tap on the, the chart itself and so it brings up this little toolbar cut copy delete edit references and comment so I want to edit references that's what's going to do that. So if I scroll up here now, see how it says edit data ranges? Look how on this thing went all the way over to the right here. What I want to do is just grab that little ball on the, on the bottom right and slide it over. And because that's the only data I want to look, I want to use. So if you could click off there, look, now it's now it's just got the data highlighted for those three months. So that's looking better already. The next thing we want to do is just maybe just kind of move it around a little bit. I mean, just it's easy to pick up and drop it anywhere you want. But let's go ahead and kind of edit how it looks a little bit more. And to do that, just like always, with anything you want to create the trades a style on it, is you click the paintbrush tool, the detail brush. And so here kind of gives you got you can switch between 2D and 3D. So let's keep it on 2D. And let's go ahead and down here under the chart tab, there's chart options. So you can turn a chart title on or off. You do that, see how the title came there? Now let's go ahead and edit that title. So this would be gas expenses done so now we got a title on there now let's go back here and edit this table a little bit more so that's go back under chart options you can turn legend on or off see how it turned the gas right there the little blue thing for gas turn that off or on border see how it populates a little uh, the black line around the entire data points or show hidden data. Since I don't have any hidden data, hidden data would be like, let's say you had, um, let's say you had April on there, uh, but you had it hidden for some reason. You just do like you were only doing the first quarter of the year, for example. So that's uh, why you could show hidden data if you wanted. But I'm gonna go ahead and turn that back off. Then you can change the the chart font. Let's go. Let's make it a little bit different so you can kind of see. Uh, let's say I like how. Let's say I like how this didn't condensed looks. Go back to chart options, you can make it larger. That looks pretty good. Value labels off, you can kind of move them where they're at. So if we go like, let's, let's do that again. Is This will show you where they're at. So I kind of like how it looked in the middle right there. That looks pretty good. Or you can go outside, which shows it above. So let's go back to the middle, I think that looks good. Number format, you could do same as source or just basic, and then you could kind of go through and pick how you want it to look. But I'm just going to click a same as source because this is a an expense uh, chart. So then the last one is you go to chart type, and this allows you to go back through and change it from all different styles. So let's look at like a 2D stacked bar, 2D area, 2D pie chart, scattered. Then you can even go into 3D columns and stuff like that. So that's um, kind of it for the chart options in terms of formatting it. But let's now let's go click on. Well, let's go back to 2D. I'm sorry. I want to keep it on the 2D uh, chart. So let's hit X axis. So you can click on value. See how it, it brought it across there to change it. It took those off and on. Now you get number format and same as source. It'll be the same as like just like before. Keep those values on there. Label angle. You can change how those look, see how it goes from left diagonal, horizontal, right diagonal. It really allows you to make really cool looking charts. So you can do minor grid lines where it kind of goes in between each one. Or you can just do the, strictly the major. And then major tick marks. 
x axis name as you can see there the value axis and to change that you just double tap in there this is dollar amount oops amount in dollars okay that's a good chart there title let's go back under this and then access lines it just kind of makes it right there like that for you so now let's click on y axis so you can change that get rid of the category labels of the months let's go see that looks pretty good like that major grid lines major tick marks see how those tick marks are on there grid lines are on there access name I don't really need that people can already tell that those are the months of the year and there's the access line and then a range would be if you had let's say this right here so a range you could move it behind the data points it doesn't really it's not really necessary on this kind of chart but it's it's handy when you've got a lot of different things that need to overlap and things like that more it's more for pictures that I found that I use it more often so now that we've got this data here let's convert it well let's leave this one here like this and let's do for the food let's do a 3d chart for that so for this one I'm gonna go hit the plus sign and then, so if it was this one, so this is the chart, the little bar graph right there. I'm gonna go ahead and do 3D, and let's do a 3D pie chart. That looks pretty cool. So when you first come out, see all those extra data points are on there again? So what we wanna do is just tap on it, edit references, scroll up, and let's get rid of these three months, or those like, six months or whatever that's just not highlighted yet. We got that going there, so that looks pretty cool. Now this little squiggly line, this allows you to rotate the angle of the of the pie chart. See that and like how they add a little glare and like little spotlight kind of feature. I think I think that looks pretty cool like that. And then once again you could also go to the paintbrush, go back to chart, you could change it to like wood texture, a little bit of just grays and blues, squiggly lines, all that kind of stuff. So you can do that with each one and once again go to chart options if you want to change the chart type. So you could do 3D columns stacked which is also pretty cool. Go in there and you can kind of angle those. And then I think with this, you can also change the depth. Make it like a really pop out of there. Column shapes, you can make them cylinder. See that, how they're more of a circle shape. Go back to chart options. Yeah. So I'll go back to, I like, actually I like how the cylinder looks a little bit better. So really it's just a lot of trial and error just to kind of manipulate these things and make them look cool. So that's pretty cool for the 3D charts. Now the last one is cool. Um, it doesn't really work that well if you're printing this out for like as a, as a document or, but if you're doing a, a presentation and you're sharing this on uh, like with a, a a projector or something like that or using an Apple TV to stream the share the screen and whatever you can do what is called an interactive chart so what I want to do here is I'm gonna go ahead and select uh, multiple rows here and then click create chart and this one I'm gonna hit interactive and let's go ahead and do we got to let's do a chart like that this time so then once again look how it added all these extra months so what do you got to do again once again edit references scroll back up to the data and grab that ball in the bottom right and just make it for those three months click done and now we got those three so now with interactive all it means is you can sit there and cycle through what each month you did which is pretty cool so then you once again you can go up there and you can adjust all these different things just like you can with each with each section so whatever you want to do it's really simple you can kind of change the colors make it a little bit opaque chart options show in a data interactive chart above where you want the just buttons only or you like slider and buttons above or below with the the data set name and then you can go back, back here to change anything you want interactive bubbles I think the best representation is the interactive columns so that's basically it for creating charts. As you can see, they, they give you a lot of cool options from changing the depth of it to the types of how it looks. All those things, you can make some really cool looking charts. And as you can see that I did it did that in less than a minute. The, the biggest thing is just finding your data points. And once you've got your data and everything set up there, it's quite simple to make a really cool looking chart. 
make your uh, work presentations or school assignments really pop and I don't know if it'll help you get a good grade or uh, get you uh, a bonus, but it definitely will have a cool looking charts than the average person. So if you have any questions about this, feel free to email us at info at yourmachelpers.com or go to our website, yourmachelpers.com and click the help tab. Thanks.